Hello guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel Being Engineer. This is the part 3 of chapter Moment of Inertia and today's our subtopic is Theorem of Parallel Axis. That is Theorem of Parallel Axis which is the most important theorem to calculate the moment of inertia of two dimensional objects as you can see here of a rectangle, square, circle, triangle or any composite figures comprises of square or rectangle. So let's go start our today's topic. Theorem of parallel axis. If the it states that if the moment of inertia I of a body about an axis passes through the center of gravity, i.e. that is I G if the axis passes through the center of gravity as we have a rectangle over here and the reference axis are passes through the centroid of the figure that is IG and their values are known to us because these values are predefined that if the reference axis are passing through the centroid then the moment of inertia of a given figure will be equal to that I am going to discuss in my part 3 or part 4 figure how these values are given. These values are already known to us for some geometrical figures. So if this value is known to us that is IG which is equal to IGY. IGY is that is moment of inertia about centroidal axis along Y axis. Along Y axis the moment of inertia will be equal to HP cube divided by 12 and IGX that is moment of inertia if, centri if uh, reference axes are passing through the centroid then moment of inertia along x axis will be equal to bh cube divided by 12 now there is a minor difference here we can see that is hb cube and for x axis it is bh cube divided by 12 so it states that if these values are known to us then the moment of inertia about any parallel axis that is IP that is parallel axis may be obtained by using parallel axis theorem. So as you can see here now we have drawn the axis at a few distance apart from a figure. Now if we know the value about centroidal axis then we can calculate the moment of inertia of this figure at any reference axis drawn at anywhere. So now the distance has increased that is distance of radius of gyration has increased k is 4 just to differentiate it from x axis from y axis we named it like k k is along y axis and r is the radius of gyration along x axis then moment of inertia will be equal to i x x is equal to that is moment of inertia about x axis will be equal to i g x plus a k square now a k square and that moment of inertia what is i g x i g x i have explained over here that if the moment of inertia about centroidal axis is known that is b h cube divided by 12 then moment of inertia about any reference axis that is parallel axis may be obtained by using this formula so i g x and i g y are known to us as we can see here then by adding a k square and a r square we will get the value of i x x that is moment of inertia about this parallel axis and i y y is the moment of inertia about y axis so this is the theorem of parallel axis